welcome to the uh, Samurai Swords lesson. Our system called Toeiryu Yai Batto Renmei. And this tape is for 10th Q, which is the very first uh, step to black belt. According to your requirement, already you know uh, all requirement through your uh, computer's internet, but we're going to follow. So each, I, each categories, uh, we follow you. So you can follow me uh, when you send in your uh, DVDs or uh, your test <clears throat> movement. Okay. Show and explain in detail how to make the following stances. Natural stance. Okay, natural stance. If you like to learn in Japanese yaido terms called shidentai. Okay. Now shidentai is uh, I'm going to show you uh, here. I'm going to lift a little bit so you can see better. One foot apart. And weight is a 50-50. And not straight. It's called natural stance. This will be a very, very basic. And if you can, if you can make this naturally, then tough to make another stances. Yaido, we don't have so many different stances. But in this tape, you have to know at least natural stance. Then next, go to shallow stance. Shallow stance. Okay. Shallow stance, I'm going to go sideways. Either uh, legs forward, but uh, most of the time we use right leg forward. So one step, one step means heel, right uh, <clears throat> leg, heel, and the left leg toes is a straight side to side one line. And the weight is 70% in the front leg and the 30 percent on the back and the back leg which is uh, left legs is heels off from floor that's called asadachi or shallow stance and the following deep stance is again basic natural stance maybe facing this way and one big step forward without going outside or making any narrower step straight and how much you step forward is this is only measurement uh, purpose when you put knees left knees on the ground I'm going sideways then this left thigh and right as calves or shin area have to be 90 degrees from floor so if you don't step enough then this won't be 90 degrees straight down so if you, this is a too much that's how do you know and again 70 percent and the 30 percent of weight distributions and left knees uh, heels off uh, from floor that's called fukadachi or deep stance how to check a sword for safety okay if you have already yaito swords <clears throat> for safety, when you swing, you don't want to leave your swords from your handle. So there's a pin to hold handle. I don't know if you can see or not. Like, are there pins? 
or if it's uh, uh, stable or not. If too much space here when you push this tsuba, and if you too much movement, then you need to adjust it. And later on the tape, I will show you how to add or fix it yourself. And uh, if it's a string is uh, tight enough to hold enough and uh, no cracks uh, on the sword itself, it is the same manners as if you have a boken. I'm going to get boken. If any cracks, and sometimes if you hit, uh, you can tell by sound. This is made for Bokken, uh, practice Bokken. Special this Bokken was, uh, so when you swing, you can make a sound. Uh, that's made for Yaido practice. Okay. Uh, you don't have to have both, but uh, uh, you need a sounding, at least a Bokken, to practice with Yaido. How to stand with a sword or boken in your hand? All right. Now, you have four fingers holding swords, and uh, if you have a string, that's the middle fingers. You hold one third of a string, and thumb go to the tsuba. But tsuba is now straight up. A little bit toward you, and uh, don't use a joint. That's a too much joint. That's a finger uh, print area. Hold it so you can push or bring in. That's you need on the belt. And uh, this. Gradually, you're going to have a name, but Tsukagashira is center, front of navel. And uh, cutting swords is a little bit toward you. Now, sideway, not straight, but not too low. It's about 35 degrees with natural stance, Shiden type. That's how you uh, stand up with a sword or a bokken. How to formally bow to the front? From this posture, you push like you're watching your uh, wrist watch. And this hand go, right hand go over and grab the whole thing this way. So you can bring this cutting edge to behind of you and hold by right hand. And from this position is a most formal standing up uh, and bow. I'm going from sideways so you can see. So not this way. This is a bad example. This is also a bad example. This is bad example. How you do is this area, let's they just move. That's how you bow to formal bow. And after you finish, again, looks like you're watching the wristwatch, going this way, and simply you grab whole things. Of course, don't forget thumb go to tsuba all the time, so you have to control your swords. That's how you do it. How to bow to the sword or boken at the beginning and end of the class? From this position, you bring front of swords. And that's the beginning of the class or uh, demonstration. This tsuba, which is hand guard, go to right side. And uh, 
here, string called sageo, and hold the, the we call butt of the sword together. And the, bring the front of you, and eye level, and the cutting sword is toward uh, 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 opposite side of you. And the bow. Now, the end of the class, end of the class is opposite. Again, push it, follow, and this going to, the hand guard going to left side and bring cutting edge here toward you. And the right hand going hold the kojiri. And the level is eye level and very nice bow. This is, looks like a lot, but after you practice, every time you practice, you'll be very, very uh, easy to do, follow. How to bow to each other with the sword or boken in your hand? If you have a partner to practice with, or some leaders, you bow, uh, not formal bow, but uh, this from this position to simply bow each other. That's how you bow each other. How to wear the sword? Uh, after you bow to the swords, then you have uh, this position. From this position, after you bow, Simply hold the right hand in the same position, left hand, which is end of the, it brings the center of your, uh, your body. And you can locate, which is you have a belt, about three around yourself. So leave one between you and the so, uh, your body and the sword. And you insert. Now I'm going sideways. And you have a string that's going above. And the push all the way. I'm using white sageo, so easy to see. So this go around here, drop, and pick up. So you have enough space, this much here and push this in one of a belt and make a loop and pick up uh, this part another loop and push through but not all the way and bring this down so you can tighten That's how to wear swords and how to wear uh, sageo. Now again, when you wear it, not this way, this tsukagashira is the center of your body. Again, this is about 35 degrees. And when you wear it, don't push too much between this holding sageo part and your belt is a two fingers space so about right here for me uh, one of the most popular fighting posture we call seigan no kamae or middle is you have to show you sideways but Holding swords in between uh, hand, two fingers apart, not together, not too far away, two fingers. That's how to hold. So this is how to hold swords and one of the famous kamae I like to show you. And uh, your wrist of your uh, both hand is a top of this area. 
We call mune, not the side way. This is not right. And the right hand don't touch to God, hand God, to God. So this how to hold, able to keep here if you have a golf uh, ball or a ping pong ball without dropping it, able to hold right here between this area. And this kisaki is at your eye level. And not this much, not close, uncomfortable, naturally. This is a, a fighting posture, chiudan no kamae or seigan no kamae. how to swing the sword from seigan no kamae to bring a, a top. So not to this way. From here, step. Now important is how to cut is the swords. This is a chopping, hitting. Cut is a, this motion how to be involved, to cut well. So when you swing, don't hit. Make a big circle as possible. Reach well. That's very important. So you practice a lot from this Bring up and let's call suburi. Ippon mai. Ippon me mai. We have uh, three different kinds. Uh, this is the first kata you're going to learn. And I will show you the facing to you or facing sideways. And the uh, minimum explanation I'm going to follow. The first, you step right leg first, like a walking on the street. One. In the second step, ready to draw sword. Start drawing. To straight, not up here. And the side, third step, same time cut sideways. And finish your cut. Shake off blood. When you shake off blood, let both legs together and the right leg step back. When you step back, right, left leg first. Now sideways. That's the Ipponme Mae. Ipponme. Sano ni. A little bit different steps involved. First, the same. And the two more steps forward. One, two.
now sideways. So no sun stepping back. So I'm going to step a little bit forward to start with. Side view. Then next will be requirement will be doji open. Doji open you can pull out. Doji open uh, means a code of ethics from uh, this page. And that's remember all fives with titles. And when you send it in tape, uh, you uh, send it in with the titles, all fives. And the next we have oral test. Oral test will be, uh, we give you all answers. So what was number one? Oral test, question number one. What is the first thing you do when you enter the martial art practice area? And what is the last thing you do before you leave the area and why? Of course, already you know. Bow. Before you enter the school, martial school, or practice area, wherever you decide to practice, even your living room or outside in the backyard, you're going in the practice area, you bow. And when you're leaving, you bow. Okay. Question number two. What do you call your instructors inside and outside the school? Okay, if you have an instructor, why you will be, um, I am your instructor. If you see me somewhere, you call Shihan or Sensei. Question number three. Why do you bow to your sword before and after you use it? Now, to show appreciation and respect. If you start learning how to respect the swords, swords will be a technique that uh, will be increased, means better. Question number four. What is the most important thing to do when you are on natural standing position? Okay, I already showed, showed you natural stance, but don't lock all joint, not too tight. Just all joint have to be loose without uh, losing the posture. So from side away, don't go like this. Still keep chest wide, shoulder down, chins in, but joint how to be relaxed. Question number five. What do you call a long sword and a short sword in Japanese? Okay, long swords where you're using a bokken or this called katana and the short swords you have seen or you might have it called wakizashi so katana wakizashi short or together they call daisho daisho 
Question number six. Point out where suka, suba, saya, sageyo are on your sword. Okay. Tsuka is handle in English. This area, tsuka, and the hand guard called tsuba, maybe in the side way a little bit. And this called saya, which is a sheath. And sageyo, which is strings. At least you have to know this much in this level. Question number seven. What do you call the front of the practice area in Japanese? Okay. From me, the front is facing to you called shomen. Question number eight. Where are the attack targets for sword fighting? Since we are using sharp swords, if you use Bokken, you pretending sharp swords, you could attack anywhere in the body. Question number nine. What is the name of the Iaido style we practice? Okay. When I ex uh, welcoming you to this organization, I told you but call Toeiryu Yai Batto Renmei, which is Toeiryu is the name of style. Yai Batto Renmei is association. Question number 10. What does Yai mean as opposed to a war situation? This question is very important, and uh, to enjoy Iaido, uh, this question is the best one, the best question. Now, uh, war situation is ready to war, so you wear armor and uh, uh, extra one spear or bow and arrow. Everything is uh, ready. When next injured, you have to have a very st stringy. And if you have extra shoes, those things you pre prepare for war. Now, Iaido is a regular lifestyle. Uh, you don't wear armor to walk on a regular street, on a regular lifestyle. So this is, uh, it's all of a sudden somebody tries to attack you. That's you are getting ready situations. And uh, no uh, preparation for war. And usually, it's one to one or one against two. You don't have uh, your uh, side 100 and uh, the other side is 100. No. Usually, very uh, particular situations in the Iaido. That's a big difference. And uh, now I'll show you a requirement for uh, this. Uh, uh, <coughs> Uh, tape. Uh, at the end of this tape, you have to read this call 47 Rolling Stories. Maybe you have a heart, or you might have this book already. This is based on true stories. To understand what Samurai is all about, we request a reading requirement for books for each queue. As a 10th queue, this is a requirement. You can go through Amazon.com or near uh, bookstores. Uh, most of bookstores are uh, able to carry in your language. And this is so many books about 47 Ronins available, but I recommend this particular book. That's a better translation and a better understanding of Samurai. Okay, thank you very much for watching this 10th uh, skill uh, all uh, tapes. And uh, I hope I see you soon in 9th skill. Thank you very much.